Hi, my name is Gary Wills. I'm the author of Wellington at Bay. Uh, today I would like to present a, a, a film in response to the Little Wars TV uh, Quick Strike Challenge. Uh, my film will be on Venta del Pozo, uh, an action during the retreat from Burgos in October 1812. It is a 15mm solo black powder war game. Following his victory at Salamanca in July 1812, Wellington liberated Madrid and uh, decided then to attack Burgos some way to the north. He uh, was unsuccessful in the siege uh, and attempted assault of Burgos and was therefore forced uh, in October to retreat back to Salamanca where he would reunite his forces with those of Hills. At dawn, it's about 6.30 on the 23rd of October, um, the French advance guard of the Army of Portugal attacked uh, Wellington's uh, uh, outposts near the bridge over the river Alonso at Buniel. Wellington's rearguard comprised Anson's Light Dragoon Brigade, Bull's Royal Horse Artillery uh, Troop and the two KGL Light uh, Battalions uh, led by Hawkett. They were also supported by uh, Julian Sanchez's uh, mounted guerrillas and also Marquinez's uh, guerrillas on the other flank. The French advance guard comprised five uh, brigades of cavalry of different sorts who took it in turns to engage uh, the retreating British. On this day there were four actions that took place, the first of them near Salada del Camino which Wellington described as delaying the French for up to three hours. The second uh, action was a bit further down the road when uh, Merlin's um, cavalry brigade burst through Marquinez's uh, guerrillas and attacked uh, Anson's retreating brigade capturing uh, Colonel Pelly of the 16th Light Dragoon. The third action was the work subject of this video, Adventa del Pozo. And the final action of the day, the fourth action, was at Villadrigo, where Boyer's Dragoon Division attacked uh, the uh, Wellington's rearguard and where the KGL Light Infantry uh, won their laurels. So let's now focus on Venta del Pozo. In order to set up the game, we needed to determine how closely uh, Bataille's brigade pursued Anson. And we did this with a die roll and uh, uh, both sides roll uh, 1d6 and the, in this case the French uh, scored greater than the British, the blue dice, and, uh, and that determined that the French had the initiative and would move first and also that the separation between the two sides when deployed would be two moves. Uh, finally the game turn length I uh, determined as being the separation in number of moves plus uh, eight turns. So in, t in total it would be a game length of ten turns. So this is an overview of the deployment itself and the arrow indicates Venta del Pozo itself, a small building too small to have any tactical significance during the game. Here is box brigade of uh, KGL Dragoons, two regiments, the first and second, uh, each of two squadrons. And here's Bull's uh, troop of the Royal Horse Artillery, commanded by Ramsey uh, on this day. And this is Anson's uh, Light Dragoon Brigade, with the, uh, the 11th uh, Dragoons on the right uh, indicated here, the 16th Light Dragoons in the middle, and the 12th uh, on the left. Facing them were Bataille's Brigade, which were comprised of three squadrons of the 15th Chasseurs à Cheval four squadrons of the Gendarmes d'Espagne and two squadrons of the Berg Lancers. Finally, we also know that there was a, a company of uh, horse artillery supporting Bataille at this battle. This chart confirms some of the rules and, uh, and more importantly, the victory conditions were used in the game. Um, and uh, the key points is that we used the Bat Powder Broken Brigades uh, criterion, which meant that the French would lose if five of their nine squadrons were either broken or shaken. And the French needed in turn to break or shake three of Anson's squadrons and two of Box squadrons. 
In French turn one, the 15 chasseurs charged into Hansen's brigade and were received by a counter charge. Likewise, the Berg Lancers charged the uh, 12th uh, Light Dragoon. Unfortunately, it didn't go well for the, the French as both uh, Chasseurs et Cheval uh, squadrons were broken uh, in the melee and uh, that would left the British at 2-0 up already. Uh, the Berg Lancers were more successful um, but so uh, rallied back to because they had two casualties. Likewise, the victorious uh, Light Dragoons um, rallied back uh, to get them close to the bridge and safety of the other side of the creek. In British turn one, Anson uh, tried to get his uh, uh, squadrons uh, reorganised and moved back across the, uh, uh, the creek via the bridge. In French turn two, the remaining squadron of the 15 Chasseurs de Cheval charged the victorious uh, uh, squadron of the 11th uh, Light Dragoons, which had not been able to move during their own turn. Um, and uh, uh, gave them a very hard time, in fact breaking them. The uh, other French cavalry were singly unsuccessful in charging home on the retiring uh, British Light Dragoons. So you can see an overview at the end of French Turn 2 uh, that uh, Anson's got a good chance of getting away. And in Allied Turn 2, Anson gets his uh, uh, squadrons into uh, March Column and across the bridge safely. In French Turn 3, uh, Colonel Favreau gets his remaining squadron ready for, to pursue the Allies across the bridge, forming March Column on the road. Unfortunately, Battelle was singly unsuccessful in getting the rest of his cavalry moving. In Allied Turn 3, Anson brought his, uh, his brigade uh, alongside the uh, Dragoon Brigade and readied themselves to, re uh, to receive the French. And into French turn four, uh, Battelle was more successful and got his squadrons uh, um, moving uh, and across the, uh, across the bridge in March Column. Allied turn four was marked by some very successful artillery fire on the uh, advancing French. Uh, crucially disordering uh, the gendarmes as they crossed the bridge and causing casualties. French turn five was a bit of a disaster. The uh, gendarmes were not able to rally off the uh, disorder despite their elite status and were stuck on the bridge for the turn, holding up the whole of the French advance. Allied turn five comprised the artillery trying to uh, cause more disorder amongst the French cavalry but without success. Anson was also un unable to uh, rally off any of the casualties from his units. French turn six and at last uh, Bataille was able to get his uh, units across the bridge, formed uh, uh, into line and charged the Dragoon Brigades who were the nearest target. Unfortunately this ended, ended in disaster as the ferocious charge of the counter-charging uh, KGL Dragoons broke the two leading gendarme uh, squadrons and one of their supports. In Allied Turn 6, the supporting uh, Dragoon squadrons uh, from the KGL charged the, the supporting uh, line of the French uh, cavalry, the 15th Chasseurs de Cheval and, uh, the, Berg -Lance, and the, sorry, the remaining uh, gendarme uh, squadron. And the French cavalry were driven back towards the bridge, uh, while the, the Dragoons in this case rallied back because of their casualties. Now moving on to French turn seven. At the beginning of this, uh, those keeping count will have realised that with five of their units broken, the French uh, brigade was broken and forced to retire uh, from the field. Uh, in fact, although the game had only lasted seven turns, the British had broken or shaken seven of the nine French units, having uh, only three of their own units broken or shaken. If you've enjoyed this video, please uh, like and subscribe and look out for the full length video uh, on my channel on YouTube.